Feng Yujun, one of the China's leading Russianists and a professor at Peking University. Russia is sure to lose in Ukraine, report The Economist. Four reasons why Russian Federation will lose to Ukraine, according to Feng Yujun. The first is the level of resistance and national unity shown by Ukrainians, which has until now been extraordinary. The second is international support for Ukraine, which, though recently falling short of the country's expectations, remains broad. The third factor is the nature of modern warfare, a contest that turns on a combination of industrial might and command, control, communications, and intelligence systems. One reason Russia has struggled in this war is that it is yet to recover from the dramatic deindustrialization it suffered after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. The final factor is information. When it comes to decision-making, Vladimir Putin is trapped in an information cocoon thanks to his having been in power so long. The Russian president and his national security team lack access to accurate intelligence. The system they operate lacks an efficient mechanism for correcting errors. Their Ukrainian counterparts are more flexible and effective. His conclusion is as follows. Russia will be forced to withdraw from all occupied Ukrainian territories, including Crimea. Russia's nuclear capability is no guarantee of success. Feng Yujun gives the example of the United States, which left Vietnam, Korea, and Afghanistan with no less nuclear potential than the Russian Federation has today. Kiev has proven that Moscow is not invincible. So a ceasefire under the Korean scenario is ruled out. The war is a turning point for Russia. It has consigned Putin's regime to broad international isolation. He has also had to deal with difficult domestic political undercurrents, from the rebellion by the mercenaries of the Wagner Group and other pockets of the military, for instance in Belgorod, to ethnic tensions in several Russian regions and the recent terrorist attack in Moscow. These show that political risk in Russia is very high. Mr. Putin may recently have been re-elected, but he faces all kinds of possible black swan events. After the war, Ukraine will have the chance to join both the EU and NATO, while Russia will lose its former Soviet republics because they see Putin's aggression there as a threat to their sovereignty and territorial integrity. According to Feng Yujun, the war, meanwhile, has made Europe wake up to the enormous threat that Russia's military aggression poses to the continent's security and the international order, bringing post-Cold War EU-Russia detente to an end. Many European countries have given up their illusions about Mr. Putin's Russia. Picture of what is going on in Krinky, in Russian-occupied part of Kherson region of Ukraine in the Russian army from, I believe, an investigative reporter. Krinky, it's just such a shore, an island and a field and also the bottom of a river which are simply all covered with corpses and bones. There are so many human losses there due to drones and because of artillery and because of direct clashes that no one takes the wounded from there. After realizing what the war is, Russian soldiers refuse to go on combat missions and are punished for that, left in the cold, tied to a tree, put in pits, or just executed. According to Russian Defense Minister Shoigu, Russian troops had captured Krinky several months ago. Один точно там случай, например, подтвержденный казнь мы нашли, да, в этом расследовании, наверное, сильно, сильно, сильно больше. И на словах это тоже было сильно больше, но я не могла в этих слоях получить второй источник, поэтому текст это опустили. Но то же самое происходит с мобилизованными, насколько я понимаю, что многие мобилизованные говорят «нет». Типа, я на такое не подписывался. И вот, например, территория Крынок, она в моих представлениях и страшных снах, она под цитатом нарисована, как бы, солдаты, и это просто такой... Берег, остров и поле, которые в принципе устланы, а еще дно реки. Просто все устлано трупами и костями уже, потому что полгода происходит, с октября где-то начался активный там, активные бои действия. Там такое количество потерь человеческих из-за дронов, из-за артиллерии, из-за прямых столкновений, 
что никто не забирает раненых, во-первых, оттуда, и это мне говорили и украинцы, и российские военные. Их оставляют там, потому что невозможно из-под шквала артиллерии вытащить часто, а когда становится возможным, человек уже умирает. Я вот не удивлена, что мои источники, они в основном с этого направления, потому что, ну, я просто по рассказам, как бы, когда слушаю, у меня уже дурно становится, а если меня это видят каждый день, наверное, что-то говорю, вот мои повар. Иран used sophisticated weapons in its attacks on Israel, reports the New York Times. Iran began firing hundreds of drones and missiles at Israel, including weapons that experts say are more sophisticated than anything Israel had previously faced until now in six months of fighting with Hamas and its allies in the region. These weapons possess greater range, and some of them can travel much faster. Fabian Hintz, an expert on Iran's military at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in Berlin, said that Iran is likely using a cruise missile developed by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, the Pave 351. It has a range of more than 1,200 miles, plenty to reach Israel from Iran. According to his post on X, different versions of that missile have also been provided to the Houthis in Yemen and to the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Forces, PMF. And Jeffrey Lewis, a member of the International Security Advisory Board at the U.S. State Department, said that Iran was using land attack cruise missiles that could carry around a ton of explosives. Russian Tomsk. Due to floods, the earth embankment next to the bridge over the river partially collapsed. Several settlements in the region have been flooded already. Water level continues to rise. Лучшее инженерное сооружение города, на самом деле, сделанное просто вручную жителями улицы Красной, без помощи государства. И я считаю, что более лучшего способа затопить гаражи не придумать вообще. Эта междуусобная война закончилась в пользу э, гражданских. Эх, бедные гаражи, конечно. Ну а что поделать? Ничего не поделаешь. Кто-то кто-то в этой войне окажется проигравшим. И уже очевидно, кто. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.